Hello. What we're going to do in this podcast is we're going to look at the term final solution to the Jewish problem. And I'm going to start off with a photograph um, all familiar to you. Uh, the sort of tragic picture um, of Jewish children in Auschwitz, uh, the most famous death camp um, uh, in the final years of World War Two. <clears throat> Pulling back, um, again, that's inset within a larger picture um, which again will be very familiar to you, which is the gatehouse of Auschwitz-Birkenau, the largest of the death camps um, where the mass murder of the Jews happened um, in World War II. Um, and pulling back a little bit more, there of course is the key term, the final solution to the Jewish problem. Now as GCSE history students, it's important you use this term correctly uh, because it is a term that is often incorrectly used. Um, the biggest, um, the, 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 the most common um, incorrect assumption that students often make is that the, the, the final solution was something that Hitler wanted right from the beginning, the final solution to murder the Jews of Europe. Um, in actual fact, and I'm just sh shifting to a different uh, slide here, um, the final solution, is the term we use it now, um, to mass murder the Jews, looking at this within a timeline, um, describes the policy that was used in the last three and a half years of the war. In other words, um, from 1942 to 1945. Um, and absolute agreement with most historians nowadays Certainly by the beginning of 1942, Hitler had made the decision to murder all the Jews of Europe. However, before 1942, and I'm going to move back in the timeline a little bit here, to the three years from 1939 to 1941, as you can see, there was debate. Um, I put a question mark there above that. And that question mark basically means there is a debate between historians. It's a matter of interpretation. What... Uh, we're not certain about is at what point did Hitler make that decision to murder all the Jews of Europe. Some historians will say that he made it um, uh, fairly early on, 1940, early 1941. Other historians will say that he made the decision um, not until the beginning of 1942. Um, there's absolute documented proof there, the so-called Wannsee Conference in Berlin, where that decision was made. Um, but you've got three years where we're not quite sure what Hitler's intentions were. What we do know, though, is if we move further back in the timeline to before World War II, okay, is that um, until the outbreak of World War II, um, the term final solution was often used in Nazi circles, but it wasn't used in, in terms of mass murder. Before 1939, the Nazi final solution to the Jewish problem was actually a very different solution. The solution was one of emigration, forced emigration, um, to empty Germany of Jews, to scatter them, to send them to other parts of the world. Uh, there was no, di no clear evidence that Hitler had decided that he was going to murder Jews until much later on during World War II. So here's another um, image for you. I'll just uh, zoom in. Um, I think it's always important um, to remember Jews are people. Too often when we do this topic, we just look at the numbers. Um, but we're talking about real people here. And there's a typical uh, German family. And this particular map here uh, is a map that shows you um, Germany in 1933, which, of course, is the year that Hitler became Chancellor. And I'm going to zoom in here on... Uh, Germany itself, Germany's in blue. Remember, Germany was physically separated. You've got the Polish corridor there and the physically um, East Prussia part of Germany that was separated from the main part of Germany. As you can see, the German Jewish population in 1933, 565,000, just over half a million. It sounds like a lot, and it was a lot, but the German population, the population of Germany as a whole, uh, was nearly 60 million. So we're ta actually talking about only 1% of the German population were Jewish in 1933. Okay, so that was the, the sort of size of the uh, Jewish population as it was uh, then. 
Now what we do know, of course, is that, and I won't backtrack through it, in the first five years of Hitler's rule, he set out through policy uh, to reduce Jews to being second-class citizens, to make their life as difficult as possible, with the intention that they leave Germany, that they emigrate to other countries. This is a useful map. Um, pause the podcast in your own time and look at some of the information, add it to your notes. Uh, but it shows you the destinations, uh, the places that they went. I mean, some interesting ones there, just to highlight. So, for example, 52,000 went to the United Kingdom, went to Britain. Uh, you've got 102,000 that went to the USA. Um, uh, pulling back and looking over the Jewish homeland that they originally lost 2,000 years earlier, Palestine, uh, you've got 3,400 who uh, went to Palestine. So the point is, is a lot of them did get out until 1938, and it certainly increased in 1938, which was, of course, when Kristallnacht happened, and that was the first real occasion of organised violence against the Jews, uh, which stepped up the rate. Jew, you know, Jews wanted to get out of Germany, and the Nazis encouraged them to get out of Germany, uh, to go and live in other countries. So that was the situation. So by 1938, going back to our map, and if we actually now zoom in um, back again on Germany... Um, you can see that the Germany's Jewish population has actually halved. Remember, it was 565,000. It's now halved. So effectively, by 1938, it's reduced from 1% to half a percent. Still a lot left, 280,000. But the, um, the, the, in, in that sense, Hitler's policy, his solution, was working. OK? His solution was working. Um, as it was in, 1930, in 1938. Now, as we move into 1939, the problem transformed, and the reason it transformed was this. Germany started to expand her frontiers. Now, at first, um, she managed to expand her frontiers without actually ending up at war. So in March 1938, uh, Germany um, invaded Austria, it was an unresisted invasion. If I just draw a line round a line round Germany, okay, there's Germany as it was before. Okay, so the frontiers. Now basically what happened is they invaded Austria. So Austria was added to the Third Reich, and that happened in nineteen thirty eight, in March nineteen thirty eight. Now there were more than two hundred thousand Austrian Jews. So effectively what happened is the German Jewish population went back almost to its original size once Austria was added. Then, in, 19, um, uh, in uh, October 1938, Germany occupied the border region of Czechoslovakia, called the Sudetenland, and then in March 1939, Germany occupied the middle part of Czechoslovakia, so effectively Germany's frontiers then moved to there. And then, of course, on September the 1st, Germany attacked Poland, which two days later led to Britain declaring war on um, Germany, and World War II began. And it was a very successful invasion, so Germany's frontiers then expanded to include half of Poland. Three million Jews living in Poland. So you add that to the 300,000 Jews living in Czechoslovakia, the 200,000 Jews living in Austria, actually now... Germany's Jewish population, which had been getting reduced before 1938, has now, within a year, massively increased. In short, the Jewish problem has got worse from Hitler's point of view. Now, if the solution to the Jewish problem before 1939, before the outbreak of war, has been to, for Jews to emigrate, to leave the country... Okay, with the outbreak of World War Two, that completely changed because when a country is at war, frontiers close. So what you basically got is Hitler has now got more Jews within the frontiers of his country, and the solution, as it has been, which is to get Jews to leave the country, can't happen because Germany is now at war. So Hitler effectively needs now to find a new solution to. The Jewish problem. The problem, the, the, it, it continued to get worse, okay, um, because I mean, what I do want to 
move on to the next slide. Here's a picture by the end of 1940, so it captures quite nicely. If you look at uh, Germany as it was then, by the end of 1940, the grey shows, as you can see also, Germany has occupied France and Belgium and ne the Netherlands and Denmark and Norway, okay, in addition to the territories Austria, Czechoslovakia and Poland that we just talked about. And then, of course, in June 1941, Hitler attacked Russia, the biggest country and his main objective for living space for the German people. And the capital of Russia, Moscow, there, and effectively the, um, the German armies swept into Russia um, and it looked as if they were going to win the war. But the Russian winter, as we well know, set in and the invasion ground to a halt just um, to the west of Moscow. Nevertheless, huge expanses of territory were now added to Germany, and along with that expanse of territory, another two to three million Jews, Russian Jews, were now under Hitler's control. So we now look at the map of Europe as it was, um, as, as it was by 1941, the end of 1941. Germany has occupied huge swathes of Europe. Most of Europe is either directly controlled by Hitler or controlled by allies to Hitler. Um, Italy was a German ally, um, for example, and um, other countries such as uh, uh, Slovakia and Romania um, were likewise um, partnered up with uh, the Nazis. Um, but effectively, uh, the Jewish problem, which had been getting reduced and reduced and reduced before 1939 as Jews left Germany because the, the emigration cannot happen and because of the uh, invasion eastwards um, more and more Jews are now under Hitler's control uh, and that obviously had grave implications about policy. The final solution as it had been before 1939 of emigration now another final solution needed to be find at, found at a time when violence has become the norm, okay? Because when you're in a war situation, violence is a, is a, is a daily occurrence. So the likelihood that uh, the new solution to the Jewish problem will be a violent solution um, has increased. And what we'll do in the next podcast is we will look at exactly what the, um, what the experiences of Jews were during this particular period. Uh, but this podcast now hopefully will give you some sort of context to uh, the, 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 the events from that time. Okay, thank you.